I started drawing on surfboards as a hobby between university assignments. I draw with Posca pens, they're a water-based acrylic paint pen. Uh, they're really good for drawing on surfboards. I'm Darren Dower, 24-year-old artist from Ocean Grove. Um, I repurpose old surfboards into artwork. Drawing and artwork is something that I've identified and developed from a young age. It's something I was good at. It started with drawing on paper and then it grew to drawing, drawing uh, wall murals and then it's moved on to surfboards and other materials. Having grown up around the Bellarine Peninsula, there's a strong surf culture in the area, so that's definitely had an impact on my interest and lifestyle. You've also got Torquay just up the road, which is the surfing capital of Australia, so you've got like the Rip Curl Pro on down there. So it all just comes together. If there's one person I think that would be inspiring to me, I think it would have to be Drew Brophy. He's been able to make a career as an artist, which began with drawing on surfboards. I categorise my style of artwork as upcycling, so it's kind of finding kind of materials that are past their use-by date and giving them a new life. I've been able to build kind of a relationship with a couple of local surfboard shapers where I've been able to get a few boards from. Um, I mostly use surfboards. Um, I do sometimes explore other mediums as well, so it's usually other old kind of vintage kind of maritime kind of beach stuff. The, the technique that I use, it's called stippling or pointillism, so that's made up of like hundreds of thousands of dots, just the whole artwork. I start with preparing the surface, so that's removing the wax, um, sanding back the board, might need turpentine sometimes to remove adhesives from the glue on the board. Um, I then create a composition on the computer with the mock-up of my design on the actual board size. Um, there's three different size pens that I use. The smallest one I use for all the fine details. Uh, the next size up I use more for building up the um, background of dots and all the tonal work and gradients that that's needed. Then the largest one I use for all the darker areas. Then I come back through with them and kind of blend it all together. I actually never got my pen license in primary school. I moved schools at the end of year four. But that's when I moved down to the Bellarine Peninsula. I was nine years old. So in that transition is when I guess everyone acquired their pen license and I never got mine. And it's funny because it's now my number one tool. There hasn't really been much of a transition from art as fun to art as a business because I'm still having fun as I'm creating these as a business. The only time I've had a little bit of conflict is I had an exhibition earlier this year at Bar 61 which is owned by Quicksilver and some of my boards have rip curl decals on them but they were able to see past the issue and accept it for what it is, a piece of artwork. So I'm definitely going to look to do some more exhibitions in the future. If things did grow big enough, I think it would be awesome to have my own store kind of gallery exhibition space for people to come and see my work. My artwork is just a part-time thing at the moment, but if there was the opportunity for it to grow as a full-time gig, I think it's something that I'll definitely embrace. I think the only possible downfall with turning it into a full-time thing is a sustainable income week to week because there's so many hours put into each piece of work which I'm wanting enough money to cover the amount of hours that have gone into it. I work part-time, which is mostly in the evenings, so that allows me to take advantage of um, the daylight hours during the day if I want to go out and draw outdoors. I enjoy getting outdoors to work on the boards when the weather's nice. It's much more inspiring rather than stuck inside. Decals have sometimes been the source of the artwork inspiration. So for example, a board that I've got from Rasta Surf, who's a local shaper in Bowen Head, so I've put the Bowen Heads bridge on that board. So it kind of ties in the history of the board with the artwork. I've had a couple of boards end up in interesting places. A couple months ago I did a commission piece which went to the Le Meridian Delfina Hotel in Santa Monica. So that was a learning experience sending international with all the customs and it's on display there in the hotel which is great exposure for me I guess. Another board with a pretty interesting story. Um, the board actually came from Wales and I sold that to a man from the UK who was travelling here and he took it back to where he was from. So it was quite an interesting journey for that board to come to Australia as a piece of equipment, then only to return over there as a piece of artwork. Depending on the amount of work involved, I'm usually looking for around $1,500 to $2,000 for a board. I guess my family would probably be my biggest support with my artwork. I think my parents try to claim every piece as their own. Um, I sometimes like to help out um, with a bit of artwork for my sisters or brother. 
Um, I've done a couple of tattoos for my sisters. I actually did a board for my brother, which he's lucky to have, I guess. Having a talent is one thing, but to really take advantage of it, you need to develop practice and just push those skills. So I'm actually still growing as an artist. I think I always will be growing as an artist. The more hours that I put in, the greater the reward. And that's about it.